James Lucas is a bit of late. It is still Thursday, October 1st, National Week in China, as well as Mid-Autumn Festival, so I thought I would read a poem, a Chinese poem for Poetry Thursday, uh, from an anthology of Chinese literature. I chose Li He's poetry from the Tang Dynasty. He was alive from 791 to 817, they died very young. And I'm going to read the little introduction about him. And uh, there's going to be a part about a, a homophonous character. As you know, in China they have characters. And his given name, which is his second name, He, uh, was very similar to his father's given name in the sound uh, that the character made when you say it. And I guess this causes problems, so just so you know. Uh, in his brief life, Li He produced some of the most remarkable poetry in the Chinese tradition. A remote member of the Tong royal house, Li He was sponsored by Han Yu in the district examinations, but was prevented from taking the metropolitan examination, which opened the way to a career in the Tong government. An enemy objected that if he were accepted as a candidate, Jin Chi presented scholar. The title would violate the taboo against the son having the same name as his father. Li He's father's name had a homophonous, homophonous character. He later gained a minor post by hereditary privilege, but had an undistinguished and short career. He died in his mid-twenties of unknown causes. Li He's, best, Li He's work is best known for its brilliant images, morbidity, and fascination with the supernatural, so much so that in later times he was known as the demonic talent, Gui Zai. Uh, I think Gray is ghost. I might be saying, oh, wait, how do you say ghost? Well, anyway, um, uh, I guess demonic talent anyway is a good way to translate it. But again, I don't have characters, so it's a little difficult for me to remember when I just see it and without the uh, pinyin. Anyway, the mid tongue in general showed an interest in otherness. But for Li He, it was a preoccupation, as it had been for his great precursor, Li Bo. Uh, Li Bo. Uh, Li He was most drawn to what was beyond the immediate and everyday world, to the world of wraiths and the undying, to dramatic moments in history and legend, and to the sensuous world of the women's chamber. <laughs> <laughs> when he does treat his own experience, he trends forms it poetically into something rare and strange, as when he picks up an arrowhead on an ancient battlefield. And we are going to read the poem, Dream of Heaven. Uh, and there are some notes here. It's about a toad, and there's going to be mention of three mountains. And, oh, all three of these. Right, let me just read the poem first, and I'm not going to read the things until after, okay? And we can talk about it. Dream of Heaven. Aged hair, the wintry toad weep colors of the sky, its mansions of cloud half revealed, their walls a slanting white. Wheels of jade crush the dew, moist globes of light. Phoenix pendants meet on paths of cassia scent. Brown dust or clear waters beneath the three mountains. A thousand years change in succession like horses at a gallop. They gaze afar to this heartland, nine specks of mist. Clear depth of the ocean spilled from a cup. Okay, so, uh, aged hare, the wintry toad, has a note. The toad and hare are inhabitants of the moon from which the dew was supposed to fall, perhaps explaining the weeping in the second hemstitch of the first line. Uh, weep colors of the sky, so maybe the moon is weeping colors. Uh, okay. Brown dust or clear waters beneath the three mountains. Three mountains are the isles of the undying in the western ocean, which, once eons have made land and sea change places, will be surrounded by dust. This is a very dark poem. <laughs> I like it. Uh, nine specks of mist. Where was that part? Yeah, okay, they gaze afar to this heartland. Nine specks of mist may refer to the nine regions into which China was once divided, or perhaps to the nine continents said to be found in the world's oceans. 
Let's read that again, shall we? Aged hair, the wintry toad weeps. Oops. Aged hair, the wintry toad weep colors of the sky. Its mansions of cloud half revealed. Their walls a slanting white. Wheels of jade crush the dew. Moist globes of light. Phoenix pendants meet on paths of cassia scent. Brown dust or clear waters beneath the three mountains. A thousand years change in succession like horses at a gallop. They gaze afar to this heartland. Nine specks of mist. The clear depth of the ocean spilt from a cup. Dude, this poem is hardcore. Okay. I dig it. Uh, it, it gives me this sense of being small <laughs> in a way and powerless in a cool way and like kind of out of control and it has these amazing images like I said um, I don't know I mean I don't know what I'm supposed to make of it but there you go there's that poem I love it thank you goodbye